the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Looks like the staff of Palace Intrigue will have to work the weekend of May 6, because that's the weekend King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla are inviting all the UK to their coronation. Buckingham Palace announced in a press release that the three-day celebration will include a star-studded public concert at Windsor Castle to be broadcast live on the BBC, in addition to multiple community and service-based initiatives. Their Majesties, the King and the Queen Consort, hope the Coronation Weekend will provide an opportunity to spend time and celebrate with friends, families and communities across the United Kingdom, the realms and the Commonwealth. Buckingham Palace shared in the release, Their Majesties are looking forward to marking the occasion with the public throughout 2023. We begin on Saturday, May 6th at Westminster Abbey. The King's procession will start at Buckingham Palace and make its way to Westminster Abbey, where the King and Queen Consort's coronation will take place. Conducted by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the religious service and celebration will reflect the monarch's role today and look towards the future while being rooted in long-standing traditions and pageantry. The Mail on Sunday previously reported that they were planning a scaled-back coronation with a one-hour ceremony that will welcome 2,000 guests, compared to the 8,000 at the Queen's three-hour coronation. The King is also expected to have a more religiously and culturally diversive service and do away with certain rites and extravagances. Following the service, the monarchs will be joined by members of the royal family for the larger coronation procession back to Buckingham Palace, where they will appear on the balcony. On Sunday, May 7th, make your way to Windsor Castle for the big concert. Produced, staged and broadcast live from Windsor Castle's East Lawn by the BBC and BBC Studios, the Coronation Concert will feature a lineup of global music icons and contemporary stars, supported by a world-class orchestra and dancers. Free pairs of tickets will be made available to the public via national ballot, and the concert will also be attended by volunteers from some of the King and Queen's consort charity affiliations. The Coronation Concert will be broadcast live on BBC One, BBC iPlayer, BBC Radio 2 and BBC Sounds. Also that day is the Coronation Big Lunch. The press release reads, From a cup of tea with a neighbour to a street party, a Coronation Big Lunch brings the celebrations to your neighbourhood and is a great way to get to know your community a little better. Then on Monday, happy bank holiday everyone. Thank you, Your Majesty, it's the big help out. In honour of King Charles' years of public service, the nationwide initiative will highlight the positive impact volunteering has had on communities across the nation. That all sounds like fun, but Angela Levin wrote that Prince Andrew could throw the King's coronation into chaos, and we haven't even mentioned Mr. Spear yet. As for Andrew, Angela Levin told The Sun Online, I don't even know if he and Harry are going together. The Sun revealed on Saturday that Prince Andrew is making a bid to overturn the multi-million pound settlement with his sex accuser after her abuse case against a high-profile US lawyer crumbled. Angela said, Andrew is out of control. Who's guiding him on this? She said it seemed to be more than a coincidence that the Duke's plans came to light less than two weeks after the release of Spare. The Mirror reports Prince Andrew has reportedly amassed a £10 million war chest to launch a legal case against Virginia Jeffrey. It is being reported that Andrew is seeking to clear his name after previously being pressured into settling the case to avoid overshadowing the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Perhaps he doesn't care much about the coronation. A source suggests to The Telegraph that Meghan Markle may have cautioned Harry out of the book. The reason, if nothing else, Meghan is media savvy. The source said, Is this the way she would have approached things? Possibly not, but she will always back him and would never have got involved in promoting such a personal project. This was about his own life, his journey, and his own perspective. It's hard to imagine how Meghan may have approached things differently. Perhaps an Oprah interview, or maybe a podcast that sometimes comes out, or even a six-hour documentary on Netflix. Palace Intrigue, we'll be right back. A cyan leading drivers to the King Harry Ferry has been tweaked by pranksters. The word King is crossed out, replaced by a new word. The cyan now guides you to the Spare Harry Ferry. Bookseller Mary Sheldon, owner of Montecito bookstore The Tecalote Bookshop, told The Guardian that she has only shifted some 30 copies of Spare since its release. 
And in the New York Times, Jessica Bennett writes, Apparently sometime in 2018, Meg and Kate were at an event together and Meg forgot her gloss, thinking as a girl raised in the 1990s, California might, that her soon-to-be sister-in-law would be happy to give her some. Megan asked if she could borrow a tube, to which Kate reluctantly agreed. This, according to the Duke of Sussex, was an American thing. According to my quick and unscientific survey of American women, and one Canadian, around Megan's age, it seems he's right. Lip gloss was more than makeup. It was a tool for discerning your place in the social hierarchy. Girls you'd share your lip gloss with, those were your rich or dies. We're all adults now and perhaps have more respect for hygiene than we once did. Maybe British girls had more sanitary bonding rituals. Still, for those of us who grew up swapping lip smackers or juicy tubes, there was something extra poignant about that moment. Maybe Megan really needed some lip moisture, sure. Or maybe she was just one girl reaching out to another gently testing the boundaries of their relationship with a simple question. Can I borrow your lip gloss? And there you have it. Hey, if you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good dance.